Hey everybody, it's uh, Doug Woods once again. Uh, I wanted to do another quick lesson. I promised you guys that I would uh, that I would teach and explain bar chords. Okay, they're very simple um, in in concept. Uh, as we're going through these different keys, you've already seen the majority of the open chords, uh, if not really all of them. Uh, what I mean by open chords, I'm talking about the ones in first position that incorporate uh, open strings. The nice thing about those is they have a nice uh, big ring to them. Uh, that's why they're oftentimes a favorite. Um, but there's certain chords, especially when you're dealing with the sharps or the flats, uh, that you can't play in an open position. Uh, so you either have to learn some relatively difficult fingerings, which uh, are quite appropriate for intermediate and advanced guitarists because they're looking for a particular tonal quality inside their chord. But for the uh, beginner, advanced beginner, or guys that just want to play along and, and have fun, sometimes that gets too cumbersome. They're not wanting to be the masters of creating their own chords or, or, or learning these uh, exotic fingerings. They want to use what they know in different positions on the guitar. Okay, if you want, you've probably seen guitarists on TV or whatever um, use a thing called a capo. All right, what this does is allow me to place it on the guitar and I'll get it in, on here, right? In a certain place, uh, over uh, behind a certain fret, and what I'm actually doing is I'm replacing the nut or my fingers, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. And I'm effectively shortening shortening that guitar. Okay, this particular guitar is let's see, where's the 12th fret at? 12, 15, 17, 19. This is a 20 fret guitar. With this capo, I'm making it like it's a 17 fret guitar. Okay, and we know that different things that affect the pitch of the string, one of which is length. Uh, I have now shortened the length, which means it's going to vibrate faster, so now change the pitch, just like if I was playing it. Alright, so I've effectively raised the tuning of this guitar based off of G as opposed to E. Now, the, what is good about a capo is now you can, behind that capo or in front of that capo, however you want to think of it, play all the chord shapes you know. In the last lesson, we learned about G. Alright, you play the G here. You're not playing a G anymore, alright? It's the G shape based off a of capo at the third, so what would that be? I'm playing an A sharp. Whoops. Alright, if I wanted to play the E minor shape. Whoops, sorry. That's actually an A minor. All right. So now you see how capos work. The whole point, this isn't a lesson on capos. Uh, the whole point is to teach you what goes on in bar chords. All right, you learned two bar chords already. You learned B minor and you learned F major when we dealt with the other key, the keys, the two key, or the four keys rather that I've taught you. What you're effectively doing with that finger is you're capoing off, just like you put the capo there. Um, it's just and and both of those instances you're replacing the nut, right? You're taking the function of the nut with your finger. All right. Now you're going to make with the other three available fingers those common shapes that you know. Okay. So we know an E major shape looks like this, right? We're playing the open sixth string. We're fretting at the second fret on the A string, the second fret on the D string. And the first fret, nah, excuse me, first fret on the G string, the rest is open. That's our E major. If we bar it and we make that same shape, excuse me, we bar it and make that same shape with those three fingers, we're now making an F. We're raising it up one half step. We slide down to the third fret with that same shape. We've got a G. We go to the fifth. We've got an A at the 7th, we've got a B at the 8th, we've got a C, and so on. Alright, <clears throat> obviously the sharps and the flats are in between what I've just shown you. 
the second shape based off of the sixth string when we're talking about bars would be that E minor shape. All right, we've learned that the E minor is just the E major where we flattened that third. So we're playing the, the two fretted uh, strings or the A string or the fifth string at the second fret and the D string or that fourth string, depending on how you want to call it, at the second fret, everything's open. All right, same principle applies. You fret off, <coughs> pinch off that first fret and then you play those same chords with the other finger, or same strings with the other fingers, and you're gonna fret an F minor. Shift it down to the third, and now you got G minor, A minor, B minor, C minor, etc. Okay? So that is the bar shapes, what would they would call the E major bar shape and the E minor bar shape. Alright, the next one that we're gonna talk about is the A and A minor shape. Alright? Same thing's going to happen. Now we're dealing with the five strings, one through five. You have the A minor shape, which we've already learned. Excuse me. And when I focus on the camera instead of playing, I, I make all kind of uh, musical mistakes. Okay, <clears throat> there you go. There's your A minor. Same thing's going to happen. So we're just going to jump to the second fret. All right, with that bar, make that A minor, right? And you got B minor. Slide that down one, you've got C minor. Slide that down two more, you've got D minor. Slide that down two frets more to the seventh fret, and you've got E minor, which is an octave higher than this one. Okay. Now you could do the same thing with A shape in that position, and then the bar is still going to happen. Let's go ahead and drop the second fret, and you've got to cover those three strings. You can either do it one on it with each finger. That's kind of hard for me because um, I have a hard time getting my three fingers in that space. If you're uh, if you got little fingers, this is pretty easy. But for me, I struggle with it. Uh, oftentimes, I'll just bar that, and I won't play the the octave. So I'll just leave that one out. All right, so that would be a B major. Down one fret, it's a C major. Down another fret, uh, two frets. At the fifth, it's going to be your D major, E major, F, and G. Okay, you can do the same thing now with your open D and D minor chords. Now these get a little tougher uh, because your D major is sitting here. You end up doing two little bars. All right. Uh, so if we fretted at the, if we barred off at that second fret like we have been, you have to set up two frets down. Uh, and what I do is I make a second bar with that ring finger on those high three strings, and then you throw that pinky in there. Uh, I'll do a close up of these later. It's kind of hard. I don't play this one. All right, but you could. Uh, you could do the same thing, building off the D minor. And so if we went to the second fret again, your D minor shape would be like this, okay? Once again, I don't typically use that. And then by doing that at the second fret one step higher than D minor, what I just fretted was an E minor. Um, there's other ways to make those chords, um, but in the um, principle of making bar chords, I want to show you all of them. You also excuse me, have the G major shape. So theoretically, you know, if that's an open chord, you ought to be able to make a bar out of it. Well, if we did, it is a bit of a stretch. I'll get up here close with this one. All right, you end up having to bar like that. So you're making, whoops, yeah, there you go. You're making a G shape with your pinky, ring, and middle finger, and then you're barring off but you've got that fret of separation so it's a pretty big stretch I mean it's a usable chord but it's kinda hard to make so this would be uh, this is an A and like I said it's hard to make there's other A's out there I would grab before I grab this one but you get the logic behind it alright so that is a quick down and dirty on what bar chords are 
um, how they're formed and the nice thing about them is once you've got that under uh, those those shapes, especially the E major, E minor, A and A minor bar chord shapes, those are the ones that are most commonly used and you know the notes of your fretboard uh, from the uh, less previous lessons that I've given you, uh, then you can find your way around any chord you need in the key. Even if you don't know one of the open chords or you don't um, or you have trouble uh, making that shape for some reason, you can find its corresponding bar chord. For example, I don't like this B major chord uh, because I have a hard time getting my three fingers in there. So, see, you hear it, it's fretting out. I play around and practice it, blah, 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 but typically what I end up doing is making the bar chord here instead. All right? Um, so you can substitute those bar chords for any of the other chords that you don't want. You get a little bit different textures and stuff like that, but this is a good way to be able to get you moving quickly through all the keys. Alright? So, for example, I'm going to rattle off real quick on the, off the six string shapes the chords in bar form that would be in the key C. Alright? So we're not starting with C. We're going to start here at E. We know that's E major, right? So we got E major, and we're going to have F minor, G major, A minor, B, which is actually going to be that diminished chord, and then C. Uh, you could do that with each key, and then you could know all your keys just with bar chords, and you'd be quite an effective guitarist. So anyways, hope that helps. Have a great one. Talk to you later. Bye.